Many thanks for joining us on today's edition of Off the Press, where we analyze major headlines from our national dailies. And to do that with me this morning is our political analyst again, uh, Moses Naikbe. Thank you uh, for being with me this morning to thanks make sense uh, make sense of uh, all of this uh, on our national dailies this morning. So, shall we begin with the Punch newspaper? Uh, that's uh, the one up for review this morning. And the big story there is APC mocks PDP says Atiku can't win at World Court. You find that on page two. And Wike is saying that many PDP governors visit Buhari at night. You can see that displayed on your screen. Uh, please find out what this is about on page two of the Punch newspaper. And uh, FG resumes evacuation on Sunday, resolves South African immigration hitches. S uh, Southwest to unveil Operation Ametokun against insecurity. That's on page 24 of the Punch newspaper is dis uh, displayed on your screen. VAT hike, uh, Senate panel uh, summons finance minister and Fowler on this issue. You find that on page 12 of the Punch newspaper. And very down part of the newspaper, uh, it shows personnel, picture stories there, personnel of Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps during the inauguration of Cross River State Command of Agro Rangers Unit in Calabar. Uh, that's a picture story there. And then uh, Governor Mackinday is saying, I will recover looted funds by past government. Find that on page nine. And tears flow as family buries four-year student. Uh, that's on page four and five, pages four and five of the newspaper. And Obaseki can't issue fresh Edo Assembly proclamation. Court says that on page nine. Mr. Naepe, where do we begin this morning? <laughs> That punch is very loaded this morning, but um, uh, let's just uh, APC mocks PDP says that Teku can't win in world court. World court, court yes. That's what uh, I it's I want to commend the PDP for taking this step because the judgment, this uh, case, this case at the tribunal has been able to recalibrate the the jur electoral jurisprudence in Nigeria. History will judge. And I think um, PDP is right for going to the Supreme Court because um, what really staggered my logical acumen in this um, um, judgment was that um, when it had to come to the issue of the certificate of the, the president and um, nothing was talked about the authenticity of that um, certificate. And I think PDP, the reason why I think PDP is going to the Supreme Court is so that tomorrow, Posterity will not say, why didn't you go to the Supreme Court? And if they don't go to the Supreme Court, this judgment will become a precedent. So let it be that the highest court in Nigeria has been able to set a negative precedent. So I think it's a good one. They can say whatever they want to say, but um, history will judge. Hmm. All right. Um, mm. uh, um, Abike again is saying that um, thankfully there's uh, FG will resume the evacuation uh, by Sunday and that all the hitches, you know, we're talking about it yeah. uh, uh, during the news that all, all the hitches uh, are now resolved and immigration, um, more Nigerians who are left in South Africa will be back to the country. Uh, so I, 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 I will look, uh, we've already flogged that issue. So I would like to talk about the issue of the VAT. You know, the hike. The, the hike on the VAT. And, and our president said he doesn't want to inflict more hardship on Nigerians. It's, you know, it's so unfortunate that this government, they speak in one direction and they act in the other direction. So do you see a contrast there? It's a contrast. Do you know the, the implication of increasing the VAT by 50%? Number one, the, it, what is VAT? VAT is consumer tax. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a it's from 5% to 7.2. 7. 7. 7. That yeah. is 50% hike. It's 50% hike. So what it says is that every good you buy, you are going to pay 50% more for that good. That is to say that it will reduce. It's like you have increased the, the, you've increased the minimum wage of the workers to 30,000. It's like the devil is giving you with the right hand and he's taking with the left hand. You've increased the minimum wage of the people by 30%. And on the other hand, you are reducing their purchasing power by 50%. It's saying that, number one, if the people cannot buy goods produced, 
definitely it will affect the industries that are producing it. If the industries don't make enough money, they will have to they have to lay off workers. It will lead to unemployment. It will lead to it will lead to inflation. It's 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 a very negative thing. So you cannot say you don't want to punish Nigerian workers and at the same time you are doing the opposite. It's like this government is confused. Mm. Anyways, we'll wait for uh, what this uh, Senate uh, summon. Will I hope come the Senate. I, I hope the, the Senate will, will 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 not allow this go through. The the, the, the federal government gets fifteen percent of the total of the uh, of the of the money that is raised from VAT. There is two ways you can do this. Why can't the federal government reduce their percentage that they get from the VAT or increase the 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 the, the VAT nest, hmm. the VAT nest, so that they can they can bring more people into the VAT net? By so doing, they will have more instead of increasing the VAT. Hmm. So I think it's a it's a it's a wrong policy in the wrong direction. Wow, points to note there. Uh, I'm just looking at this paper also. Uh, the top down part, rather, at the bottom says, deploy women soldiers to fight insecurity. Aisha Buhari is saying that on page nine. From the top of my head, I'm wondering why uh, she's saying that. And the northern government uh, governors <laughs> rather meet back FG's, FG's national livestock plan. You find that as displayed on your screen there on page 18. And Abiodun disowns official 15.8 uh, billion road expenditure. What do you think about deploying women soldiers to fight insecurity? You will say what a man can do, a woman can do better. But is this a gender issue? No, no, no. I'm, I'm just assessment. saying you will say what a man can do, a woman can do better. So, so is that? So if the men can fight insurgent, the women too can fight. It's not only when it is good that uh, you know you say what a man can do a woman can do better so in this case i think she's she's right you're sounding as if you um it's just because it's women but no 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 what the technicality no 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 what they are trained they have they have undergone through the same training okay so that's the basis for so that's the saying. basis so what a man can do a woman can do better well i'll mm. move to the back page of uh, the punch now where it says uh, there's a columnist there, Ayo, Ayo say, uh, writing something on xenophobia. Beyond contingency plans. Please read and find out what that is about on uh, the Punch newspaper. As we move on very quickly now to the Vanguard. And here on the Vanguard, it says the big uh, story there is xenophobia. Returnees tell tales of wars. Of course, as we can imagine, you find that story on page five. We came back with nothing. Pregnant returnee laments. Uh, Pretoria, many other places in South Africa is unsafe. I wept as returnees sang national anthem, says EPIS chairman. Uh, that's Alan Onyema. Yes, it was really captured yesterday. And the federal government does 40,000 airtime, uh, 9 gigabyte data for returnees. Are they doing to rehabilitate 10 of them? And lawyers, CSOs, blast South African government for harassing and detaining returnees. Uh, you find all of this on page 5 of the Vanguard newspaper as displayed there. And on the top we said plateau, we are doing livestock production through ranching, not Ruga. Lalong is saying that on page 42. And you have no powers to take over Edo Assembly, called tells Nas, on page 12 of Vanguard newspaper. And I have no intention to inflict more hardship on Nigerians. The president says so on page 11. Uh, presidential tussle, Atiku should apologize to Nigerians instead of appealing judgment, Lai Mohammed says. And uh, in security southwest governors to launch operation amotekum akeredolu says that on page 10 a violent protest police arrest two over attack on fire Miss wife you find that too on page 14 and then real reason jonathan pardoned alarms find that on page 9 now what are your thoughts on uh, this whole bit of the of lai mohammed saying that uh, pdp should apologize because uh, another paper has got it i think it's this day uh, that's got the same um topic why that's a line of thought well uh, these are poli these are political comments you see it's like Mohammed it's unfortunate that he has forgotten that he's a minister of information not the APC spokesman this man needs to be told that he should leave the work of, a, of an APC spokesman to the APC spokesman. But you and say he's a communication minister. He's a communi that is, he's not communicate. This is not the work of a communication minister. A communication minister is supposed to bring the country together. He's been bipartisan. 
sorry, it's been part. It's, it's been political here. You understand me? It's been partisan here. So what I'm saying is this: Blind Mohammed should understand that he's not the APC spokesman. He's the mm -hmm. Minister of Information, and it's so unfortunate that he's telling Atiku to to apologize to Nigerians for fighting for his fundamental human rights. Mm. It's so it's so shameful, and I know that history will history will judge men like this. And also. Uh, if I can jump on, um, yeah, go ahead. If I can jump on the story that talks about the the Edo Assembly, yeah, talks about uh, you have no powers to take over the Edo Assembly. I think that's a good judgment by Justice or Motoshaw. You know, it it shows the kind of the kind of uh, mental capacity that uh, our lawmakers possess. You know, maybe they should um, employ the services of. Um, of legal advisors to advise them on legal issues. They shouldn't be making a fool of themselves when it comes to such issues. Hmm. Now, returning tell tales of wars, we can imagine that that's what it will uh, be. All uh, I want to say to them is, welcome to the the poverty capital of the world. Is that so? That I, I beg to say that's uh, that's that's, is, that's the fact. Nigeria is the poverty capital of the world. Look, I mean, we know. Yeah, the, the, Am I saying anything out of the ordinary? I mean, we know there are figures to back that, but oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. that sounds very negative for people it's who not, have gone. No, 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 no. Through a lot. You see, the problem with us is that we don't want to face the fact. You think so? Yes, they should. They are welcome to the cap poverty capital of the world. So um, that, that's not my words. These are the words of of proven international organizations. But they are suggestive, aren't they? They are not suggestive. This is just, I'm just welcoming them to the poverty capital of the world. Well, um, so, um, and I think all of these uh, newspapers have got the same head headlines, so to speak. Even uh, we've talked about uh, the president saying he has no intention at all to inflict hardship on uh, Nigeria. Uh, you've, you've talked about that also. Yeah. Imports rise by 67% in first quarter of um, 2019 balance of trade declines. Please find you see, out. You see, you see just to, to, to jump on that, uh, you know, they say import rise by 67% in the first quarter of 2019. Of 2019 and the balance of trade mm -hmm. has declined. declines. That shows you that the, the, the rate of the dollar to the naira is affecting our balance of trade. That is just what, what, what that statement is saying. He's saying that even, even in as much as our, our export is increasing, but due to the discrepancy between the exchange rate of the dollar to the naira, it is having a negative impact on the rise of our export. So it's not really showing. Hmm. That's what that is saying. Right, so um, that will be it for Vanguard newspaper this morning as we go to this day. I made reference to this day uh, newspaper earlier when it says, in show of triumphal triumphalism, FG and APC demand apology from Atiku and PDP. And it says, your gloating won't last. Opposition party replies them. And EFCC meets with senior lawyers over P and ID and 9.6 billion naira arbitral award. Please find that on page. Page eight of this day newspaper that will be displayed on your screen. Uh, manufacturers, employers, and others reject the bid to hike VAT. So we've seen the, there's a red alert already. And uh, FG, you would respond, I'll give you time. FG, urge, urge FG to widen tax net. Buhari, we won't inflict more hardship on Nigeria. The same again. And Northern governors adopt livestock plan. Uh, National Assembly lacks power to take over a do assembly at the court rules on page 10. So I saw you trying to say something already. So which yeah, one? I was just trying to to portray the fact of the of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. You know, this VAT is, is going to have a negative uh, multiplier effect on manufacturers, on Nigerians and on the economy. Because number one, it's They've given us, they've given the Nigerian workers 30,000 minimum wage, and they are looking for a way of taking it back from them. This VAT, if it's allowed to go through, will rise inflation, will, will increase unemployment. Mm -hmm. It will also, it will, it will, it will also make sure that the purchasing power of the average man is reduced drastically. So I, I just hope that. Um, the federal government will, will, will accede to, to, to superior reasoning and then just dump this idea into the waste bin. And also, they can explore other, other, uh, um, other um, 
part in 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 dealing with these issues, mm -hmm. which is increasing the tax net, the vast the VAT net, and also what does the federal government is taking fifteen percent, the state government is taking thirty percent, I mean fifty percent, and the local government is taking thirty five percent of the total VAT that is that is generated. Why can't the federal government reduce their VAT percentage and also reduce the cost of governance so that they can make accommodation for this uh, for the lapses that they have here by so doing they will they will make sure that this vat is not uh, increased is not implemented and also in, in increasing the vat net it will go a long way to cushion the effect if they go ahead by just increasing the VAT, mm. this is a demonic political, I mean, a demonic economic strategy of giving with the right hand and taking with the left hand. Very strong comments there. Yeah. Uh, Northern governors adopt the livestock plan. What are your thoughts on um, this news? No, it's Nigeria is a confederate, is a is a is a federation, and I think um, if if some state governors decide to adopt a particular uh, policy. They have the right to do so as long as their people are in support of it, you know. But um, the, issue, the 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 plan of trying to force it down the throat of other people in other regions um, is not right. I think if they if they are okay by it, it's okay. If they don't force it on other people. Okay, so um, basically the same uh, news again going through the newspaper this morning and behind the, uh, this day newspaper is emergence of two Nigerias. That's a dialogue with Nigeria by Akinos. Akin Oshun Tokun. Please grab a copy of this day newspaper to find out what this is about. And we will move now to the nation newspaper, which is up for review. Governors drop Ruga for national livestock. And that's on page 46 of the nation newspaper. And Nigeria is 146 on ease of doing business. Uh, that's a ranking that just released. Find that on page 41 of the nation newspaper and marking there to probe looted funds on page 45 police arrest two four-year students and uh, that's on page 45 also quadri asar re rekindle rivalry find that on page 47 and nsaa on false plan for 150 million dollars hiv trust fund as you can see it displayed there on your a screen and controversy over 7.2 percent VAT rate. Find that also on page uh, first, first page and continued on page 46 of the Nation newspaper. The big story there: federal government Atiku gave false evidence at tribunal. Ex vice president should be prosecuted. PDP will obtain verdict. Why I hailed ruling by Wiki. Uh, those are the big stories there. And then we'll see picture story of the president uh, chatting with all progressive Congress national women leader, Haja Salama Tubaiwa, Umar Eluma, and the other, women's that, uh, other women on the front page of the newspaper. Basically the same thing running through. Any thoughts? Well, basically it's the same thing. And uh, I just want to touch on um, the... The fact that uh, the APC keeps saying that Atiku gave, gave false, false evidence. evidence. Well, these are all political gimmicks. And I know that um, this judgment has set a precedent. If it's allowed to go through at the Supreme Court, it will set a precedent in electoral jurisprudence in Nigeria. And then um, generations to come will look forward to this. You know, what they are saying is that you don't need a certificate to become... Uh, whatever you want to become in Nigeria. Is that the precedent that they want to set for generations to come? But time will tell. Mm, time will tell. Mm. All right, and on the back page, again, is another columnist, Shegun, uh, who's writing on engaging the diaspora with the picture of the president and the AU chair, Abdel Fatel El Sisi. Uh, please find out for yourself what this is about on the back page of the Nation newspaper as we now move on to Complete Sports. And here it says, Ndidi Eyes United defeat on sixth attempt, keen to complete full set of top six wins. Mourinho hails sensational Ronaldo, puts managing Real Madrid as his finest moment. Messi unconvinced Mbasa Nima Nima Effort says, Basa is my home. I want to stay, but 
find out what the bot is inside uh, the complete sports. And we have um, other stories here. Raw wants Eagles stay beyond 2020, predicts very good future for Nigeria. Uh, Gerald Hales, Bozin Aribo. Uh, please find out for yourself what all of this is about in the complete sports and even on the back page of the complete sp uh, sports you will find more stories there do you want to any intervention on the sports yeah i just story? want to talk about the issue of raw um, i think um, it's time my own opinion i think it's time we disengaged him and then also bringing the likes of um, samson siasia because um if he couldn't give us a goal at the past Nations Cup, I see no reason why he should still be there. You know, we should bring in, because when Samson Siasia was there, they were playing fantastic football. And I think they should bring, in, bring him back and also give him the support that um, Ro has been getting. And the cost of having Samson Siasia will be lesser than having Ro. And um, since he hasn't given us the goal at the Nations Cup, I see no reason why we should keep spending um, $50,000 on him every month. I think um, it's not worth it. We should go and uh, use our own. So is that an outright comparison of uh, competence here? Yes, because he didn't give us the gold. And if you look at Samson Siasia, they almost had the same result. Mm. So, so what's the big deal? Anyways. I think we should go for our own and then cut down cost, go for our own and, in, and encourage our own people. Mm, but he predicts a very good future for Nigeria. I that's, hope you share it. The future is what we talk, we're talking about results. We are not talking about a future. He has been given an opportunity and he was able to give us bronze, and which is not a, a new thing to, in Nigeria. Not good enough. It's not good enough. Mm. So we should, if it's our own that has given us bronze by now, we would have chased him out. So why don't we keep our own there if they keep giving us bronze and still paying them lesser? I think it's a good one for us. All right. So uh, many thanks again, uh, Mr. Moses Naikbe, for Thank joining you. me this morning. And that will be it for Off the Press uh, today. Um, this is the program where we dissect the national dailies and make sense out of it. Uh, so you join us on Monday for this same program at the same time, 8.30 a.m. to Friday. And I am Amaka Ukoi. Have yourselves a great day.